So something that stood out to me is that you are, it's not like you're a no-name person, but to the, you know, the average person watching movies, you don't have a face that is recognizable yet. So it's like you, you call you, me a no-name. I am. <laughs> I well, call, no, I, you, I'll you, own it. But it's it's amazing because you use your face on the on the you know the cover art or whatever. And then you are the lead actress, you're the director, you're everything. And you know, what's been the reaction to that? Obviously, the, the film is doing well, right? It's been uh, a journey for sure. There have definitely been moments. I mean, look, I was very rebellious in the beginning. I said, this is a non-negotiable. This is what's happening. It wasn't even just that I was like, oh, I'm this incredible actor. It was like, I know what my story is. I'm not going to slow down the process to go try and get Emma Stone as incredible as she is. She's Emma Stone. She's got a slate and movies to make for many years to come with auteur directors that are very established. And I think everybody in Hollywood is like, how do we get Emma Stone? How do we get Elizabeth Olsen? And then years go by and you never make your movie. And I was sort of like, look, I write, I direct, I act. I know what this is. This is my story from my real life. I'm going to keep it tight and keep it moving. And we're going to make this movie. And I have it very clear in my head. And I was sort of like, putting the the blinders on, like, please, nobody get in the way of what I can see my North Star very clearly. And I just want to make it the way that I see it clearly in my head and not go into development and not go into casting and not go try to attach this person or that person. And, and five years from now, I'm still trying to attach Emma Stone, you know? So, and, and of course I, you know, I have a degree in acting. I, my, my, my history, my, my, um, I, I'm an actor. So it wasn't like I was just like, no, I'll try acting. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm an actor. So I thought I'll I'll fill the cast with incredible, recognizable faces, which is what I did. And and I felt really supported in that. But also I think the the truth is when you have such a vulnerable experience, it's like seared in your brain, isn't it? When yeah. you have a sort of formative, um, painful, excruciating, but um, profound experience, you don't really want to change it. You don't, you're just like, this is what it was. And I just, all I need to do is translate it to the screen. Yeah. Um, and I felt in some ways the easiest, clearest, strongest way was to just use myself as my muse. Yeah. And obviously you knew the character and the emotion you were trying to portray um, mm -hmm. better than anyone you would have to explain that to, to get that to come mm -hmm. across. Um, was it hard in the pitching process, though, for people to, I guess, believe in you or see your vision? Yeah, it was. I think it always is, isn't it? When they, yeah. everybody would love to kind of put their stamp on it and what they think is going to make it the most commercial and the most successful. And, um, you know, it's a business. But I really clung tight to it. And uh -huh. I, it, I really was not willing. And some people did try to convinced me to do it differently. Mm -hmm. And I was quite hard headed and just said, I have ma written many movies that can go to Sandra Bullock, that can go to Emma Stone. This one's mine, right. you know? So right. you want me to write a movie for Emma Stone? When Emma Stone calls me, I'll write a movie for Emma Stone, right? Like mm -hmm. until then I'm going to make my movies the way that I see can actually get made within them. I don't want to spend my whole life fighting to get to Emma Stone. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Um, you, as you mentioned, you have a lot of big actors in there or recognizable faces. I noticed that as well. I thought that was very interesting casting too. They all did a great job. Um, so did you know these people, were they friends of yours or you did it actual casting? Yeah, there were a combination between people that I'd worked with before, people that I was a fan of and just wrote love letters to and begged them to do my movie, people that... Uh, yeah, I was that that my casting director knew or my producers knew. And we just kind of piece by piece each individual role, like just what's who's the dream? Let's go after them. Let's beg them. And little by little, you kind of put a cast together. I, I, I uh, I'm an actor, so I'm not a big fan of auditioning. I'll be honest, like right. at any turn that I can just cast an actor based off of the work that I have seen or from knowing them. Um, I'd rather just say, you're the one come, come play in the sandbox with me. Right.
So while I was watching it, I was wondering, are some of these roles based on real people that you knew or was it just you that was the real person? Yeah, it's heavily based on my real family mm -hmm. <laughs> and guys that I have dated, uh -huh. um, my, my real best friend, you know, it's, it's all inspired by my real life. You know, a lot of the characters have are heightened versions of people that I've met, um, or been close to, or had sex with, but generally it's, it's, uh, I'm very inspired by my real life for sure. I think we, we all have had those experiences where we're like, this is so chaotic and cringe. This could be a movie scene. <laughs> right. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S -S, understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.